on both Rex and Rose panels, so would anybody like to ask a question? See the show, raise your hand. The Twilight Zone. Okay, cool. so you're familiar with it. Cool. I mean, there's so many cool things. How about the subway scene when he's coming through that thing? When he's coming in that subway car, that is, that's that's the Hulk in a, in a in a very small space. That's like a rhinoceros coming at you in a closet. You know, it's funny. With Eric, uh, we have to know. We had to film a scene from like 6:30 in the morning. I had to get him up, made up for in the morning, and I always uh, dread. Every time we get into the makeup, because of course the Hulk, you know, in Panama, and that means actually without speaking. So I just break into the makeup, and we filmed in Vancouver. So I'm at the train station. I never forget, they took my bathrobe on, about to film the scene. And in Vancouver, it would probably be like maybe 45, 50 degrees. But the train, as coming through the tunnel, there was like a huge breeze coming in, ice cold air. Yeah. And, it, and Bill kept saying, look pissed off, look angry. And I'm just shaking. <laughs> and I'm trying to show my teeth. My lips keep coming down. Yeah, so it was, a lot, it, was a, it was tough though. At the same time, while we were filming, they filmed that movie, Buried on the Wire with Mel Gibson, yeah. The Golden Horn. Yeah. As a matter of fact, on the way here, coming from uh, LA Act, Golden Horn was on the plane with me. And we were talking about the film, such a coincidence that I'm with her and now with Rex, but both films were filmed at the same time, 1988, I believe, yes. Yeah, yeah. You're with Goldie Hawn on a plane? Yes. She's a lovely person. Oh, I love Goldie Hawn. That's like another rate overboard. I know it's not something that we've got a guest here, but that's just a film that's popped into my head when I said that. Rex, moving away from, sorry, I, would, I don't want to start talking about overboard now, but what is it actually like to see him in full girl? Is it, is terrifying, are you an actor with thinking that this is just acting, it doesn't bother me, or did you actually get a bit scared? You know, if you've ever seen one of those movies where the guy's uh, uh, the hunter and he's wounded the rhino and he's got to go into the tall grass and that rhino's charging at him, I have had the Hulk come at me, which I just described to you in my brand new floor shine shoes that uh, I went sailing. Not at, not at his expense, it was, I was playing into the, into the stagecraft of stage fighting. I, just, I threw myself down, but it is, it is, like I say, when I see that scene in the movie, I don't sit around and watch that movie all the time, but my youngest daughter enjoys it. And um, I have an out-of-body experience when I see it because I was in that person. It is a, it's a, it's, it is a strange thing. I, don't, I mean, it's, it is, um, I have played many parts of being the romantic guy, you know, with that moment, and, but, that is a unique unto itself world that I share with Lou. That when I see him, I mean, it's a joyous thing for me. I'm, uh, you know, it's quite a, a while ago that we did it, but like I said, when I when I see him, I'm glad we're both spinning around this planet and we're healthy, and I think we're both very grateful, yes. uh, you know. Um, but uh, he, there is no other Hulk but this man right here. Backstage. The best Italian food, right? Oh yeah. Tonight, round number two. Yeah, but he doesn't remember the name of the restaurant. That's what's going to be the fun part. We're going to be. <laughs> no, it's interesting because it, uh, the food we ate uh, last night at the Italian restaurant is one of those places they like a hole in the wall when you walk in. 
you feel like you're home. Like all the waiters from Italy, they know exactly what to serve you, especially the taste of wine. You got two nights to go. I won't say where I ate, but I'm very disappointed with the food because the waiter was trying to take the order, and it went on for 15 minutes, and the chef screwed up about 10 times. And I think he was afraid to come out and talk to me. <laughs> Did Hulk smash? <laughs> well, Rex and I go way back because I had a lot of fun with Rex. We filmed uh, The Trial of the Hulk. We played Dead Devil, who happened to be blind. And we had the fortune uh, of working with Bill Bixby because Bill directed the show. And it was beautiful because I was very excited because Bill, you know, especially playing David Banner. And being a director, he brought so much flavor to the show. And you know, we had a great time, especially, uh, yeah, especially New World Pictures, and they incorporated their devil with the character. It was a two hour movie, and we were almost six weeks, I think, six weeks filming. It was true, authentic, and uh, great sound stage, great sets. Uh, John Rice Davies was uh, Mr. Big. Yeah. Uh, great cast, and, and really, and, and it's true, Lou always speaks of Bill Bixby because he was the genesis of it all. And uh, he he walked a line that we, everybody, cast and crew, were happy. He was like the Pied Piper. We all just danced to his tune, and it was a good, lively tune. He, he made every day special, every day. And uh, a couple of evenings, too, were quite special in his company. I think one day he did like 140 takes. Do oh. you remember that? Yeah. He, well, also, he, he, he had a gag reel. Anytime I would do a scene, he'd go, okay, Rex, do one for the gag reel. And, and they, you know, you, you can imagine the comedy you could do with the Daredevil. Uh, I was walking into doors the wrong way, and <laughs> doors were slamming in my face. And, and I always did one, and he played the gag reel before we did a screening at the studio. I would give anything to see the thing, because it was, it was riotous fun. And that's the kind of humor that he brought into it. I never worked with the director ever. That he was after so the scene, witty. He was so quick, so witty. Yeah. After he'd seen, he'd go, "Okay, Rex, let's have one for the gag reel." And I'd, I'd come up with some pratfall. I'd fall over, do some, knock over some costume. Uh, the hot part sound, wasn't it? You know, I mean, I guess favorite for being comfortable was the, was the t-shirt or the tank top. You know, to being comfortable. But where I mean, you know, Max von Sydow, his costume weighed uh, 65 pounds. Yeah, so that's that's very uncomfortable. Uh, Clytus, Peter Wingard, his was so heavy that he couldn't sit down, he couldn't really walk, they had to, he had to lean against uh, sort of a perch. Uh, yeah, there were some, yeah, it's, so that's why things, are, it's a, a lot more modified nowadays and easier, easier for the act. But I, it was easy for me, again, a t-shirt and a tank top, I'm good to go, you know? Or no shirt, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes no answer is the best answer. So did any of you think that, you know, 30 odd years later, you'd still, like, the, I remember the 25th anniversary DVD coming out and going, I have to have that. Did you ever think that you could be still have such a following and people still introducing families to it? It's wonderful. I, I call it a, a triple blessing. So our, our first blessing, you know, a lot of people say Hollywood is, is unpredictable, but I say, no, that's a lie. Hollywood is predictable that it will be inconsistent. It would be, yeah, it would be inconsistent at all times. Um, so the first blessing is getting hired for a project. That's the first blessing. The second blessing is if your project does well, in television ratings or box office. And the triple blessing, what we're doing right now, is longevity. That's what we're talking about. You know, I could say next year that we filmed Flash Gordon 40 years ago. So it's longevity, it's absolute blessing, I, I love it. You know, a lot of people say, don't you wanna uh, kind of walk away from, I said, no, I, I um, Flash Gordon to me, uh, you know, he's, he's your superhero without the superpowers. He's just a guy, right? He's just a guy. He also happens to be the quarterback for the New York Jets, okay? Uh, I had to get that out, right? The, uh, but he's just a guy, you know? Um, and he has to rely on his wit, and when that's not performing the way it should, okay? He's gotta rely on his athleticism. So yeah, it's, it's wonderful, I love it. 
So me, myself, Sam J. Jones, the similarities are uncanny. They really are. I really am. I really believe I'm Flash Gordon. And then when I'm Flash Gordon, I really believe I'm Sam J. Jones. So you, you just can't, I can't walk away from it. You know, I was a Marine before I was an actor. So I've been an actor for 41 years. I've been a Marine for 45 years. So I can't shake it. I don't want to shake it. Sure, sure. And they come up to Gizmo and they just rip his face off. 
rip his mouth off, or they put like a new happy one on, and I'm like, ah, what are you doing? You're ripping his face off. They just pe peeled off, and then they would put the smile on, you know, and they would glue it on, and maybe five minutes later, I think his nose like this, smiling and ready to go. So, yeah, I mean, it was really cute. You gotta realize something, when you're an actor, you have all sorts of weird things happen to you. And people say like, what's it like working with puppets? But what's it like working with an actress you met 10 minutes ago and now she's your wife and your first scene is the love scene? You don't even know her. And you're making out with her. You're like, what is that? Like, hi, how are you? I mean, it's, it's, cra it's crazy. It's a crazy life. You're pretending things are happening. You're pretending people are shooting at you when they're not shooting at you. You're pretending you're in a different galaxy when you're not anywhere near a stage. You're pretending someone you never met is your wife. And so you're pretending that this adorable thing is your pet. Not that huge a leap, really. <laughs> Not that huge a leap. Would you want one in real life? Well, I, I've got one. I don't need, I don't need, you know, I've got the actual gizmo at home in the closet. The real one, you know, the one that's alive. You have to <laughs> feed it very carefully. You got to keep it in the closet where it's you know, nice and dark and dry. Good at work. So, yeah, so Giz and I, it's still tight. <laughs>